A task force aimed at tackling a growing teacher shortage in Texas will now give more of a voice to actual teachers. At first, only two teachers were on the 28-member panel, but now the Texas Education Agency announced it's increasing the size of a task force, adding 24 teachers to the mix. Maggie Glenn spoke one-on-one -on -one with TEA Commissioner Mike Morath to talk about the reasons for the change. When the Teacher Vacancy Task Force was first announced, teachers like Stephanie Stoby noticed it included only two teachers. So I was kind of disappointed when I saw that because more than the superintendents, it's the teachers that know about the reality of the classroom. TEA says the plan was always to include teachers in the process in the form of presenting to task force members. But um, during the deliberation, the first deliberation meeting of the task force members, it became clear that rather than just have uh, teachers present um, to the uh, task force, and, and in fact, we have an independent teacher advisory group here uh, as well. The goal is to improve teacher retention and recruitment coming out of the pandemic. What we've seen during the, during the last 24 months is a, a notable increase in um, attrition rates. So uh, teachers who are retiring uh, effectively uh, or teachers who are leaving the profession. Lampasas Superintendent Shane Resco, who's on the task force, says his district welcomes any hiring help. You know, 10 years ago, we would have candidates that would apply, numerous candidates, probably 10, 15 candidates that would apply for a given teaching position. And then with COVID, it's gotten to the point now to where we simply just don't have applicants to pick from. At the end of the year, the task force will outline policy recommendations to lawmakers in time for the next legislative session in 2023. In the meantime, school districts can follow along online. Between each meeting, we'll be posting updates related to promising practices and, um, and other sort of best practice policy approaches. Maggie Glenn for State of Texas. Maggie spoke at length with Commissioner Morath. We want to dive deeper into their conversation to get insight into the long-term goals of a teacher task force and what happens next. Let's talk about kind of logistics of these meetings because the task force is going to be meeting once a month for the next year or so. Um, and you talked about, you know, you're going to be discussing possible operational changes, possible changes on a policy level, on the state level. Um, but tell me how these meetings kind of go and what the kind of end goal is, if, if there are any kind of tangible end goals with this task sure. force. I mean, I think the uh, the ultimate end goal is to approve, improve um, the professional experience that teachers have in our schools. The What, what we do to improve our ability to recruit um, and onboard and prepare them for their first year, what we do to continue to grow them professionally each year in and out, um, and how we um, make the, uh, the job tenable given all of the stresses and difficulties uh, that are associated with the work. I mean, the, the, the job of teaching is, um, it is extraordinarily difficult. Uh, you know, we, um, if you reflect, for example, on what a brain surgeon does, um, immediately prior to going into the operating room, a brain surgeon's uh, you know, cleansing their body of impurities, scrubbing themselves clean in the, in the clean room. They're reflecting on the lasers and the scalpels and all the tools that they'll use during the surgery. They're thinking about the, um, uh, the most recent sort of case history they read about. They're thinking about the one patient's uh, brain and everything that could go right and could go wrong in surgery. And then they walk into the operating room and there's one brain that they're responsible to mold and it's, and it's under anesthesia. And our teachers, when they walk into an operating room every day, there's 20 brains that they're responsible for uh, molding and the kids are very much awake giving active feedback during that operation. So it's, this is an extraordinarily difficult um, role. Um, and we wanna make sure that we create um, uh, the sort of best environment possible for teachers to be successful. So I think that ultimately is the aim of the task force. Um, and by improving the professional experience, it will improve both recruitment and retention and reduce the, um, uh, the vacancies that exist in schools. This is something that I think has been building kind of for, for years, even before the pandemic hit and made everything worse. But would you mind kind of just speaking to, again, kind of the, the detriment that the pandemic has had on, on teachers across the state when it comes to virtual learning, when it comes to mental health, et cetera, sure. over the past 24 months? Yeah, I mean, it's, it has been a very difficult 24 months, uh, really for all of us in the country, for educators in particular, um, uh, for parents. Um, and the, the, uh, we have had um, intermittent short, uh, shortages of, of teachers in, say, specific specialties, um, certain uh, advanced math and science and, and CTE areas, um, uh, and in certain rural settings. Um, uh, for years, there have been shortages here and there geographically, even though statewide, there haven't been a significant shortages. And it's it, when you think about the scale of Texas, it's 
Um, it's pretty significant. Everything is bigger in Texas. Uh, we, we hire uh, somewhere around 40,000 new teachers a year in the state of Texas. Um, so um, historically, there's been enough broad supply for the state, although there have been individual shortage areas um, uh, dependent upon ge geography and, and specialization. What, uh, ha what we've seen during the, um, during the last uh, uh, 24 months is um, a notable increase in um, attrition rates. So uh, teachers who are retiring um, uh, effectively um, uh, or teachers who are leaving the profession, it's, uh, it's the, the annual attrition rate is up about 1% um, uh, from its historic average. Um, a part of that can be explained um, right now because the economy is fairly hot, but it's also just the, 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 the disruption of the um, of the pandemic was difficult. I mean, you, uh, last year, teachers were teaching roomies and zoomies, uh, as, as it were, the kids in the classroom and kids that were remote, sometimes at the same time, and that is quite difficult. Um, uh, the, uh, actually, actually it's, it's so difficult that the legislature um, banned the practice um, to try to make it uh, more effective, both for teachers and for students across the state. Um, the, the, um, uh, you've had people whose entire social network was disrupted by the pandemic, um, and that affects you personally. It affects uh, your kids. It affects um, the um, the teachers themselves, and and the teachers. I mean, we people get into teaching because they love children, um, and um, uh, and our teachers are incredibly capable. But um, sometimes it's it's just difficult, and um, they often feel the weight of the world on their shoulders. They take personal responsibility for the kids in their care, and so. Um, that's a lot to carry. So you mentioned some metrics. You mentioned we're hiring historically 40,000 new teachers a year. And then uh, over the last 24 months, the attrition rate is down about 1%. Um, what would you, I guess, if you could have a measure of success for this task force, would it be kind of getting back to those numbers from before? Or what would kind of be a measure of success for this task force? Yeah, I think uh, what you would see if, um, depending upon the changes that we are able to make, you would see fewer early year professionals leave the profession. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, so that the, the turnover rate of first year, second year, third year teachers, you would see that decline. You would see, um, more teachers going through rigorous preparation experiences uh, more, I should say candidates, people who wish to be teachers getting prepared. Um, and you would see uh, a slightly lower, um, overall turnover rate, people leaving the profession as a whole. I think those would be tangible outcomes. The TEA is currently taking applications for anyone wanting to be one of the 24 new teacher spots on the task force. A teacher can directly apply or you can recommend a teacher for the position. It asks for ideas and best practices that would qualify that person for the job. We have a link to that application right now on our website. Just look for this story in the Texas politics section. It's not medicine related. It is political theater and it's time for it to end. Federal mask mandates are still in place for air travelers, the strategy some lawmakers are using to fight the ban. 